Now, we're doing Big Finish. And I've decided, um, let's go a little in a slightly different direction, and yet we're not. Let me explain what I mean. Um, Big Finish with a Doctor Who license, which they've had since 99, and have extended it to 2014, and all their greatness and awesomeness and wisdom have, of course, done several spin-offs with characters. They had a Sarah Jane series. I've talked about Unbound, a bunch of things. They had a Gallifrey spin-off. They have a Dalek Empire. They have a Cyberman. They, they just, you know, took the fact that this is a huge infinite universe where you could tell so many different stories, make up all these different stories for it, because, you know, the canon's almost unlimited as well. You, you can do that. And they did one interesting thing. They have a range that's still going to this day called the Companion Chronicles. Now, the Chronicles, most of the time, are stories... Basically, they're just new, um, new classic stories, but told from the perspective of Companions, mostly for the fact that um, they did it for the first four Doctors. They mostly still do them for the first four Doctors. And the reason why was um, the first three, of course, have long passed away, so you can't use them. And Tom Baker, for the longest time, did not want to do, did not want to be involved with Big Finish. He didn't like the scripts or something like that. He's involved now. I mean, I, re I record, I reviewed his very, maybe not his very first, but the first from his his separate spinoff series itself. And I've, of course, done some audio dramas from the Eighth Doctor that are a spinoff from the main range, because there's a main range, and then there's all these spinoff ranges. So... Basically, the way the companion, the companion Chronicles work is they're just audio books with a companion who's clearly older than what they used to be, which is kind of, in a way, helps it. Um, telling you a story that you just never saw on television. And I like that. That's a very interesting format. And I'm only pointing that because this one's nothing like that. Um, Solitaire was um, from the fourth season they're doing these. They, they, I think they're, on, they're getting into their seventh, I think, right now. And Solitaire is not an audio book in the same vein. It's a two-person audio drama. They've done one more of these since, and I want to get my hands on that sometime soon. And I just want to get this because it wasn't like them. I wasn't sure if I'd get used to it. I'm used to it kind of now because I've gotten a, th a handful uh, since, thanks to various deals and other ways. Oh, f legal ways. I didn't... I can't do torrents. Uh... This is another Celestial Toymaker story. It's in the Eighth Doctor era with a character that we talked about in Zagreus called Charlie Pollard. Um, and this is a... Okay, here's the thing. Doing something like this with just two people in one space is difficult. And they basically do it for um, up to the range of a standard new series episode. Um, well, it's a two-part classic story. It, it, it's formatted the same way. And it's somewhat familiar to how the toy maker works. It's a very... It's in the vein of the mind robber. That's kind of why I thought with when I did Nightmare Fair, it'd be more like that, because it's messing with the companion's mind, and it has a very clever way of subduing the doctor, but yet having him there. The, the toy maker turns him into a puppet, which, in a very creepy but cool way, um, can only communicate if someone operates him. Like, you have to put your hand in the back of him like a marionette. And, uh, or a terrible Jeff Dunham, Jeff Dunham puppet. And he starts talking with whoever's voice. Good way of not having the doctor, but having the doctor there. But sidelining him. I, and, and make this idea work. Because, uh, again, the format, the doctor's usually in these stories just, you know, of course, told from the past tense point of view here they basically figured out a way to do um, a side story in an era they've already done themselves because Charlie Parlard is solely a big Finnish character and it's a simple thing the toy maker forces her to play a game before his shop collapses and destro just destroys them both and it's simply that but it's a it's a very interesting piece. All these nice little twists and turns confusing her and you as an audience member. It keeps your attention. It's just going, going, um, telling all these riddles, making you think, challenging you. It, 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 it's a very a slightly surreal piece carried by very strong actors. India Fisher, who plays Charlie, is great. 
And again, David Bailey is great. They both work off each other well. Um, this I recommend. This is a very, it's a very short, very good story. It, you don't need to know much about Charlie. It doesn't dive deep into her character, into who she was or what she is. It doesn't do that with Toymaker either. At the end of the story, the doctor, still a puppet, sums up what the Toymaker is. You understand it. It's a very easy jump in, jumping on point. Big Finish usually has it for eight bucks. Um, American, eight bucks American. Eight bucks, eight pounds too, but eight bucks American. Um, and, you know, Big Finish is always adding sales. They're not having the one that they currently had for this, and I already owned it. Um, this is a short review, but uh, it's a very interesting, very fascinating story that I can't spoil because, A, it's filled with, it's filled with um, a very fine amount of detail, so I can't do much with it to tell you. And... I just, and even if I did, I just want you to kind of, it's an, it's something you have to experience. All I can tell you is it's great, it's interesting, it's settings great, and there's good acting in it. It's a very nice two-person play. So if, you, if you're ever curious, maybe you should check it out. It's available for download.